NCAA has set a timetable uh, for a dramatic overhaul of how it governs collegiate athletics. Now, this is a fairly big story. Uh, obviously, we're swapping off of Olympics here, but it's a massive story. You and I have talked about this forever, about restructuring the NCAA. We've talked about just doing away with it, period. Yeah, I was about to say, I didn't use the word restructure, though. Yeah, you, you said throw them off a cliff, Delicious. I think. Like, <laughs> but what they are going to do, they have called a meeting for November for collegiate presidents, chancellors, com- conference commissioners, etc. The NCAA is going to, and I quote, reimagine how it manages the needs uh, of its more than 450,000 athletes. But re-imagine this, we talked about, all the time. <laughs> we talked about Mark Emmert. Do you that, think anybody? Hey, oh, oh, oh. do you okay. think anybody ever imagined like the NCAA and what it was supposed to be? I think they imagined it way different when it was first founded, and well, now yeah, it just it was, grew. It was, it was there strictly for the safety and protection of the student athletes. Correct. That's exactly what it that started was, out. That was its as. only entity was to. So that's how it was imagined. Yes. Now we're going to now reimagine it, dude. It has evolved to a point where. It's so far removed from what it was originally started as to say that you're now going to reimagine it is an insult to all of the people that have been hurt by the NCAA. Yes. Yes. So uh, this meeting will be a massive, massive thing. We are edging it's ever awesome. closer. I'm so, I'm so glad. I'm so glad they're going to do this in November. Right at the holidays, right when all of these, A, college football is at its apex. Okay, so nobody's busy then. None of these present draft flag directors are, are going to be doing anything at that time. No one's getting ready for their school to go on, ho- A, to do finals, and then to go on holidays. No, but no time like November to do this, okay? Well, so, I, nobody's hold on. doing shit in February, by hold the way. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. This is... This is just a meeting to discuss what to recommend to the board of the NCAA in January. With the actual, Zoom, if if this isn't a Zoom meeting, then I got problems. But go ahead. <laughs> I tend to agree with you. But they're all gonna fly charter somewhere. Oh yeah, and they'll meet somewhere and have, their... and have steaks, and everybody yeah. spend a uh, ass ton of money, and it's just gonna be ridiculous. I'm sure it's all taxpayers' money, by the way. Let's remember yes. this. That, yes. that's all, these are all state schools, except for a few private schools. So. All of those people's plane, private jet, and all that, it's all taxpayers' dollars. Yes. So the the official vote will be in January because that is when they meet to do the actual voting for the things that change over. Remember, we talked about how NIL would go into effect in January of this year, and it didn't because yeah. they ended up not voting on it. They decided to shelve it for whatever purpose. But either way, this is a meeting to figure out how to restructure the NCAA. We are getting ever closer to the big-time power football schools pulling away from the rest of Division One, the rest of the FBS, and I think that's going to be one of the biggest things. They, they have talked openly. One of the quotes was talking about how we can't say that an Alabama football player is the same as a, a Binghamton you know, soccer player. Cross player. Like, yeah. it's, it's not the same thing. You can't say that they're all equal. We have to find a way to restructure this, blah, 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 blah. They have talked about the Power Five moving away in football. I don't know if it's going to be for football and basketball or just all of the power sports, whatever. Well, I think the NCAA is going to fight like hell to keep basketball. Probably. I mean, they, they need to. That's their biggest because, money maker. Yeah. But if they don't keep basketball, then Mark Emmert salary goes from – Two million dollars a year to a couple hundred grand a year, yeah. maybe, maybe a yeah. hundred grand a year. Well, because like, all the TV deals are, are ripped up at that point. Yeah, you know, and while, that, while that's we their enjoy only source of income, yes. So I, this there will be something here. And my imagination is running with football. They are going to divide the big time schools in football from the smaller schools. Now. What size are the smaller schools? Does that mean the AAC schools who only bring in a, a certain amount of TV revenue? I don't know. It doesn't mean that they are going to move away from the MAC and Conference USA because they only bring in like $400,000 in media rights deals every year. I don't know. But November is going to be a massive, massive meeting to figure out exactly what goes on. There's, there's no real... There's no real information. Uh, here's here's what we found from the Mid-American Conference Commissioner, John Steinbrecher. 
Uh, he said, it's evident we're going to take a, a hard look at the structure and governance of the association and have a discussion about values and a discussion of goals. We've talked about modernization of the rules. Well, perhaps it's time to modernize the association. So here we go. Uh, Emmert said, I think it's really the shifting legal environment, the economic environment, the political environment, all of that, that creates this opportunity in a lot of ways to stop and erase the blackboard and draw a new chart again. And that's a really, really powerful opportunity that can't be wasted. So here we go. We got more change. We got more things coming. And who knows what this one is going to turn out to be. The committee for this will be appointed in August after every division nominates candidates. You, you know who the, the typical guys are going to be, right? It's, it's the ones from uh, the big-time schools. You're going to have Greg Sankey involved, the commissioner of the SEC. You're going to have probably John Steinbrecher from the, uh, uh, excuse me, the MAAC. Uh, you, you'll just have the typical bunch that are recommended, and then they will be appointed to be members of this meeting, and we'll go from there. So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So, so the problem that I have, my fear of this, it's really easy to say the Alabama football players shouldn't be treated like the Binghamton lacrosse player. Right. Okay? They should be treated different. That makes sense to me. I'm not going to argue that. I do not believe that the Alabama football players should be treated any different than the University of Ohio football player. I, I tend to agree. This is the difference of they're going to make rules and they're going to use extremes as your example, but they're not going to use your gray areas as example because they're going to cut those off at the head. Yes. That's that's my problem with what I, I'm preparing myself for them to go do. Yes. Yes. That's it. Is is it's e- everybody in the country says that makes sense. That makes sense. Alabama, Binghamton, you know, football, soccer. The, they shouldn't be the same. They're not the same. What are we talking about? But nobody, nobody's gonna say Alabama, Ohio. Nobody's gonna say that. Yeah, and because one of those is in the gray area. That's where we actually go- are going to have the problem is nobody's going to say Alabama, Memphis. No one's going to say Notre Dame, UCF. Like, that's that's where we're going to have the issues, and that's yeah. a problem. Or yeah. Tulsa, or a- any other school that's not a big boy school, but they still put the majority of the percentage of their resources into football. My issue shouldn't be a dollar amount of what you put into football. If you're going to pull them, it should be a percentage of your income. Yes. It should be a percentage of your revenue. Because if you look at Appalachia State, I bet they put a bigger percentage of money into football than most of the SEC schools because basketball, baseball, track and field, all the girl sports in those same areas all cost more money than anything big, you know, Appalachia State does. Yes. Yes. So that's a very good point by you. Percentage of revenue that should matter more than total dollars because they don't have the total dollars. So you can't say Alabama spends more than App State on football than App State spends as a university, as a whole for academics, athletics, and everything else involved. That you can't compare those two. But I, if they I do like that point a bigger percentage or a comparable percentage on football, then it shouldn't matter. Then they should be treated the exact same. Yes. I, and I like that's that. That's what I like has that. to happen. I, I tend to agree. We'll see what happens in November. Now, I will tell you I, this, I don't know what they're going to do. People, there are zero people in that room, and there are zero sports writers ever going to bring that up unless they listen to this show because nobody ever – I've followed sports for so long. Nobody ever brings up the equity in what – the little guys put into being good. Well, we we've seen it Memphis, firsthand Memphis. with Memphis, right? Yeah, Tom Bowen. Memphis is not yeah. a, a a a very rich school at all. No, but a, all. the AD Tom Bowen that came over from San Jose State. You remember when uh, Mike McIntyre was it became the Colorado head coach? Well, McIntyre yes. had San Jose State rolling once rolling. upon a time. Like it really led them to a ten and two season. All that they had never done that at San Jose. The AD that got them there was Tom Bowen. So then Memphis hires him away, and poof, magically, Justin Fuente is actually hired before Bowen is hired. You got two seasons where Memphis is not very good. Third season, skyrocket, 10 wins, all that good stuff. Fuente ends up taking the Virginia Tech job. Mike Norvelka, it doesn't matter who the coach is now because the infrastructure has been built there, and they are putting in. And they're continuing to put resources in Exactly. They understand football is the front porch. 
they're not they're not and that was a, that was a let's give let's give credit to the man that made that happen by the way that is John Cal Perry said if you want to compete in basketball you have to be great at football yes because I can't make enough money for this school for us to be great in basketball because basketball doesn't make it you have to go make the millions of dollars in football so we can put a a few hundred k to a million in basketball yes. That's where the money has to come from. So go there, leave me alone. A, it gets him out of his hair. And B, it puts the Otis on making the money on someone else, which all of that was genius. Uh, but that was it. If you look at Memphis's percentage of athletic budget, it, so much more goes to football than anything else. And yes, Ole Miss is the same way. And all these other schools are the same way. But they should all be treated the same based on how much of the money they actually have to work with. Yes. It shouldn't matter how much money you have. It should be how much money do you have to work with? What are you giving to football? Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That's all I want. I want to spread that word as wide as I can spread it. I, I like it. It's a very, a very, very valid point. Very valid. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.